guys, I just wanted to give you a little bit of help on some of the questions on your assignment for today. So at the top here, these are all definite limits. And the reason that they're definite limits is because your x is approaching a specific number. It's going to be an indefinite limit if x is approaching infinity. Okay, so looking at this top section, probably the two that we would need to check together um, would be number two and number three. So number two, when you very first plug in your half here, you get eight times a half on the bottom is four, four minus four is zero. That's bad. So we want to try to fix it first. We're going to try the factor cancel method. So if you look at the top of this, these are both perfect squares. So the square root of 4x squared is 2x. The square root of 1 is plus or minus 1. So we do a 2x plus 1 and a 2x minus 1. Okay, looking at the bottom here, we can plug in our 8x minus 4. That's going to have a 4 that I can divide out. And so that's GCF. When I take out my 4, I have 2x minus 1. And then at that point, I can see that this guy here and this guy here are going to cancel out with each other. And then remember, after we factor cancel, that's where we can take our 1 half and we can pop it back into our equation. So we'd have 2 times a half plus 1 over 4. 2 times a half is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 over 4 is going to reduce to 1 half overall. Sorry, that's kind of messy. Hopefully you followed it. Okay, look at number 3. We are taking pi thirds. We are plugging it in for x. So now this is going to be the sine of 4 pi thirds. Okay, so we use our hand trig. On your hand, pi thirds is this guy. Okay, fold it down. And sine would be three fingers left over that. So that'd be root three over two. But then we need to check what quadrant we're in for four pi thirds. So remember that this is three pi thirds. So if I want to go to four pi thirds, I'd have to go three and then one more. That puts me right here. So that'd be all students take calculus. Tangent is positive. That means sine is negative. Okay. So remember each of your methods, uh, see what you can do on that next section. Also, number four, when you plug in zero here, um, you should not get a divide by zero because remember e to the zero is going to be a one on the bottom. Okay? All right, come down to the next section, please. We are going to work number uh, two. Number two says determine whether or not the graph is continuous at its breakpoint. Use the definition of continuity. Okay, so remember for continuity, step one is you need to find f at the breakpoint, which is negative 3. Okay, so you should ask yourself, do I plug into the top section or the bottom section? Well, the top has the equal to, so that's where we're going to plug in. Now, the very first time I plug in negative 3 plus 3, I'd get a divide by, the, by 0. That's bad. But remember that all of your rules still apply. So we're going to try to factor this top part. So if I were to set up my little t-chart, which we reviewed in class yesterday, you'd have negative 12 as your c. Possibilities are 1 times 12, 2 times 6, or 3 times 4. But then remember, the negative tells me that I need to subtract to get the middle term. So if I want to get a negative 1 here in the middle, I need to do 3 minus 4. Then divide by x and go bottoms up. So it'll be x plus 3 and x minus 4. So I'm going to write that out, x plus 3 and x minus 4. And then my x plus 3's, bloop, bloop, cross out. So now it's only x minus 4. And x minus 4, plugging in a negative 3 to that, is negative 3 minus 4 more, which is negative 7. So our y value is defined. Step 2, we need to find the limit as x approaches negative 3 from the left. And then we need to find the limit as x approaches negative 3 from the right. Okay, we already did the top part, and remember that the top part represents the left side limit. So I'm just going to copy that answer down. We got a negative 7. Negative 3 from the right, I'm going to use the constant negative 5. 
And remember, those limits have to be equal. So at that point, I can state, therefore, F is not continuous at X equals negative 3. Okay? Uh, number four is going to be a conjugate example. Um, so I just want to remind you, you're going to have to try to fix this one using our conjugate method, which we reviewed in class yesterday. Um, come over here. Remember that when you're doing number two, I'm not going to do all of it for you, um, but notice the way that the domain is broken down. Okay, this is when X is one. This is when X is not one. So when I do my first step here, I'm plugging into the bottom. F of one would just be three. Remember, that's my value at one. But then in step two, when I do my limit as X approaches one from the left, and the limit as X approaches one from the right, I'm actually going to be plugging in to the top both times. Because remember, if X is not equal to one, that includes X less than one and X greater than one. Because it's all the numbers other than one. So to the left of one and to the right of one. Now, you are going to have to fix this, but you can factor cancel it. Okay? And then after you can factor and cancel, then you'll substitute. Okay? Number four, your hint is make sure you multiply by the conjugate there. Um, and look back at yesterday's examples if you need help with that. Okay? All right. Turn the page over, please. On the back here, we are finding horizontal asymptotes, vertical asymptotes, and removable discontinuities. Horizontal asymptotes, you are using your rules, which are Bobo, Botten, and what was the other one? Betsy. Okay, for your vertical asymptotes, those are the terms in the denominator that do not cancel. And then remember that the holes are going to be the ones, the removable discontinuities are going to be the denominator terms that do cancel. Okay? So again, I'm not going to work all these, but I'll do a couple of them. Uh, number six is starred, so let's do that one first. Horizontal asymptote, you'd be doing the limit as x approaches plus or minus infinity of x minus 3 over 3 minus x. And then remember that uh, I'd be checking the size of the top and the bottom. So the size is an x on top and a negative x on bottom. That's going to be a bet C because they're both equal, so I'd take the coefficients. Remember, my coefficient on the top is 1. My coefficient on the bottom is negative 1. So 1 divided by negative 1 is negative 1. Vertical asymptotes are anything that make the denominator uh, 0 that does not cancel. Holes do cancel. So we have to see if we can factor and cancel this. So the top is going to stay x minus 3. And then I notice that the bottom is almost exactly the same. The only problem is that the order of subtraction is backwards. So remember that you can divide a negative 1 out to the front. So I'm going to put my negative 1 here. And now look what happens. Negative x divided by negative 1 is a positive x. 3 divided by negative 1 is a minus 3. And so now I can see that these guys actually do end up crossing out. And if they cross out, that means that x equals 3 would actually be a whole, not an asymptote anymore. There are no x's left in the denominator, so my vertical asymptote would be none. Okay? All right, next one to look at, let's do number, um, let's do number 9. I want to do the ones that are uh, not going to be as familiar. Or actually, we can do maybe... Uh, we'll do 8 and 9. Okay, look at 9 first. Okay, you should be using your powers to see which one is bigger. x squared counts as a power. ln x is a log. So if you look back at your notes from Wednesday, okay, we classified these. Logs are smaller than powers. So that makes this a button. So for my horizontal asymptote, I would say none because it's bigger on top. Okay, your vertical asymptote is anything that make, makes the denominator zero. So if I want to know 
when ln x is equal to 0, I have to solve that to find the x where that happens. Now, if you know about the ln graph, you know where it happens automatically. But if not, e both sides, e to the ln crosses out, and then x equals e to the 0, which is 1. Now, your holes have to come from things canceling out. So these are not going to have anything in common, so I would put none for that. None of those terms cancel out. Okay? Look at number eight for me. Okay, you should be able to do really the top part of this fine. I'm not going to do that for you. Um, but for your vertical asymptote in your hole, do LNX and E to the X have anything that's going to cancel out? Okay, hopefully you know the answer to that is no. Okay, nothing canceled. Okay, but when you look at your denominator, you would do the exact same thing we did here. A vertical asymptote is when e to the x equals 0. And just kind of think about in your head, think about the graph of e, right? Here it is. Does it ever actually equal a height of 0? Okay, no. It doesn't ever equal 0, so you can put none. Okay, if you tried to ln both sides, most of y'all know more about E than you do about ln, so that's why I wouldn't recommend that method there. Okay, last one we are doing is number 10. Absolute value is in the problem, so I'm going to do the limit as x approaches infinity. And the limit as x approaches negative infinity separately. Remember, the two types of equations that you have to do this for are absolute value and exponential. So make sure, like on this one, you're going to have to check x approaching infinity and negative infinity. So it shouldn't just only be D and E. You have to check both. Okay, so back down here. This one, I see an x and a 2x, so it's going to be a 1 half. And then remember, for absolute values, the other one's always the opposite. When you're approaching negative infinity, it'd be negative a half. So I would come over here and put y equals 1 half, negative 1 half. Okay, from there, we learned yesterday that you can cancel with absolute values. You just have to be careful about what sign you're using to cancel them. So here on the top, if I'm doing x minus 3, I'm going to factor a 2 out of the bottom here. That leaves me with an x minus 3 left over. So these guys would cross out. And does that make it a vertical asymptote or a hole? Okay, hopefully no, you know the answer is a hole. So it would be x equals 3, none. And remember that 2 doesn't give you a vertical asymptote because it never equals 0. So only x's on the bottom are going to give you vertical asymptotes. Okay? Um, the last one I'm going to just give you a hint on is number 7. Okay, you cannot factor that. You're going to have to do long division. Okay, and you only need to do long division to determine whether or not these factors cancel or not. So the horizontal asymptotes will be easy. You're, you'll use your rules as usual. But then when you're trying to see if x plus 3 is a factor, you'll have to divide it to know if it can cross out. Okay? All right. Good luck. I'll see you guys on Tuesday.